All right. Um, I'm going to give a quick introduction to Ed Foundation's 420. And uh, I'm going to try to go through this really quickly, partly because I wouldn't want to listen to myself on video for more than um, a few minutes. So I'm really just going to try to kind of hit key points um, here. So what I like to point out, the way I like to frame Foundations of Education is that it's, well, it is, you know, it's an overview of the history, philosophy, sociology related to education. And generally speaking, education and schooling in the broader social context, um, the way that it was formed in the U.S., and then the policies and issues that impact it today. Um, I like to frame it as professional knowledge. So, um, you know, a lot of jobs, if you're, you know, making sandwiches somewhere or something, you might need practitioner knowledge just to know how to do a certain process to achieve an outcome. Professions like being a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher um, all have parts of their professional development that require an understanding of that profession. And to me, this course is the one that focuses most clearly on that. Um, I feel like it's a really good opportunity, a unique opportunity to reflect on um, the teaching profession, how it evolved, and um, the values and other things associated with it um, over time. So, and then I always like to point out that too, today is a very, very unique time and we're seeing a lot of changes. One example of this would be the Red for Ed movement. This is a movement that began around teacher compensation, pay, um, resources. Um, so that that's happened here in Indiana. And then we've also seen this pictures from West Lafayette, Indiana. We've seen school board meetings become a flashpoint for um, political debates over teaching of racism, um, uh, mask mandates, all kinds of other things. And in this class, we'll talk about the formation of school boards, how they came about, um, why they're still important and influential today. Um, and then another example here, this is uh, from a strike that's ha happening at the current time period in Chicago. Um, and I think that the reason teachers are able to get a lot of leverage is because there's a national teacher shortage, about four and a half percent of education positions are unfilled currently um, nationally. So a unique time that I think is gonna, I, it seems to me bring about changes in the coming years. Um, so the way that I organize the class as a whole on the macro level would be um, in units. And I have four four-week units. Um, each kind of evolves chronologically. Um, the first one, we start with the early period. We'll talk about Jefferson, um, the founding of the United States, and the role education played. And um, through that, each unit, too, will also talk about contemporary issues. And then um, each unit sort of evolves through time and we get to the current unit where we talk about contemporary policy, um, you know, child left behind, testing, all those kinds of issues. And then on the week to week basis, I will send a an email each week that has reading notes, kind of an outline for what's coming up in class, which is also information on the syllabus. And um, and then I just ask that you come to class prepared, ready to discuss the material. In class, I usually lecture for a few minutes, but then I have you guys get together in groups and, um, you know, so you guys can discuss um, the material. We cover it. And um, I, th I think if you use class effectively, it's, it's really helpful. Um, I really encourage talking in class. Um, the way I frame it is that, you know, I will tend to, if class is quiet and stifled, I get, I get nervous, I tend to start over planning. Um, so class will go a lot more smoothly. I think the more discussion there is um, and the more likely I'm, you know, likely to end a few minutes early or something if we have a really good um, discussion. Uh, with this slide, I'd like to point out that Ed Foundations is um, uh, aligned with accreditation standards, and there's a class like this at, at all major teacher education programs around the country. Um, the grade structure, I think, is pretty straightforward. The scale, I just use ball states, and then the evaluation is participation, exams, the final paper, uh, and final exam. And I'll uh, talk a little bit about each one of those. 
Um, the attendance policy is important. Um, I give you guys four days to use with what I say is professional discretion, uh, meaning you know you don't need approval from me. There, you if you need to miss to take care of something, you're given days to do that. After those four days, though, um, it will negatively impact your grade. Your grade will drop a letter grade. So, um, but of course, I am willing to make accommodations. You know, if there are circumstances that prevent you from being gone for an extended period of time, I just would ask that you would communicate with those with me and um, provide documentation. Um, with texting, you know, it's just if it becomes a distraction, um, I might just send you an email or message or something. But I just ask you to be kind of mindful about that. And I always like to say, look, if you need to uh, address something, you're welcome to step out of class, make a phone call respond to a text message. I understand that life happens. Um, you know, if you need to do that, feel free to do that. Um, I do have participation as a grade, so I, I do want to be, you know, remind you to participate in small group activities. You might try to sit with people that you feel like you can have a good discussion with. And I really think if you use those effectively, that is a time where you'll reinforce the material it's helping you prepare for the exams. Um, I'm generally outlining in those, you know, what you need. And as a quick side note to help with those, I do have um, some handouts that are on the Canvas site uh, with, with each reading. And they are optional. I don't grade them. They're just there to help you with some of the key information. And generally what's on those handouts is the material that we will cover in class. Three exams, they're a mixture of multiple choice, short answer, um, and um, yeah, they, they're just at the end of each unit. The first three just cover the end of that, you know, just cover that unit's material. The final exam is covers the final unit and then has some select uh, questions from the first three units. So it's a kind of a partly comprehensive uh, exam. Just a little bit about me really quickly. I um, grew up in Baltimore. Um, I did my undergraduate work in New Mexico. Uh, I was in Las Cruces and in Albuquerque at um, New Mexico State and then the University of New Mexico. And then uh, was in California. I taught in a um, alternative ed program for kids at risk of placement in residential areas. A lot of our students, for example, were in foster care um, and then I did my PhD in Foundations of Education and Educational Policy Studies at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, in recent years, I've worked a lot uh, internationally, and I've worked in uh, since um, about 20, 2011, 2012 in uh, Pakistan. Um, I have been there, I think, about six times since then. I still stay in touch with students. Um, I review dissertations from Pakistani students in education for the Higher Ed Commission um, in Pakistan. And then um, I'm, I'm working uh, with a, uh, on a project with a group of scholars um, this semester, actually. I've also worked in Afghanistan, and I was there in 2013 and 2014, and more recently worked with Afghan faculty in India in 2019, and was actually there in 2020 when the pandemic started. And um, so I remain in contact with a lot of uh, friends and colleagues there. Um, so um, I've worked with the Department of Education at, in the US um, on some projects periodically. I uh, reviewed proposals and provided feedback um, with Race to the Top, which was Obama's kind of one of his signature policies. And then um, this semester, actually, I'll be working on um, reviewing uh, TRIO program proposals, which is um, a great program that helps underprivileged kids who are talented and motivated transition to uh, college, gives mentors, provides mentorship and support. In class, when we do introductions, we usually talk about things people can connect with. So I'm a lot of people, if they have a dog, mention their dogs. So we have a Dogo Argentino mix. Um, she likes to lay in laundry baskets. I enjoy cooking, among other hobbies. Um, and then I really pride myself on 
being accessible. So I would strongly encourage you, if you have questions about the study guide before the exam, you know, just set up a time to meet with me. If you're unsure about the paper, I'd be happy to talk with you about it. I generally have time after class, um, a few minutes at least if it's something short. If it's longer, um, we can definitely set up a time to meet. Um, and right now at the moment to Zoom and, and, you know, or by phone, I'm always happy to talk to students, whatever, you know, medium is the best or, you know, if it's easier to eat, meet in the, the evening or on the weekends, you know, I can usually arrange time. So please don't hesitate me to contact me. And then two, email is a good way. I just really ask if I don't reply to your email in 24 hours, please email me again and just say, hey, I didn't get a response from you. I won't be upset. I'll be happy. I appreciate it. Um, I hate to miss emails. So if I miss your email, please just feel free to contact me again. Um, I try to get to them all, but inevitably, I feel like more recently, I did, with Canvas and other factors that make it difficult, I have occasionally feel like I've missed one or two. So um, the other thing is you have my uh, cell phone number. I've provided it by email and uh, it's on the syllabus. And I strongly encourage you to text or you know call if that's more convenient for you um, i don't mind getting text messages from students and in the evenings or weekends whenever it's convenient for you is fine um, accommodations straightforward i have the statement on the syllabus i just ask that you please um, remind me if if like if there's an exam coming up and you need extra time or something it's not hard to do that i just um have high enrollment numbers at the moment and it really helps to have a reminder. Um, the course readings are all available on Canvas so you don't need to purchase a book and um, there's nothing else required for you to purchase. They are available on, on Canvas in PDF format but if you would prefer to have a print version there is the option of a course packet. Um, I've lost track a little bit of the process, but if you contact me, I will help you do that if you have if you're having any problems. But I think through the through the bookstore you can you can order that. And I would mention if you do use Canvas, you pull up the um, PDF. Sometimes the view is switched. That was the only way that I could scan them in. Um, but you can rotate the view on Adobe. So with a PC, it's right click, rotate view. With a Mac, sometimes I've found you have to save them to your you know, desktop or a file, then reopen them and you can hit the Adobe drop down, rotate view clockwise, and, um, and then you'll be able to read them. Uh, there's a research paper for the class. I'm not going to you know, go too in depth in the introduction because um, it's something that will evolve over the semester. It's in three different parts. The first part will be an annotated bibliography. Then you'll have a peer review rough draft and then a, um, the final papers due. And um, those are all culminate in the grade, so they're all part of the final grade for the paper. Um, the last three pages of the syllabus are um, guidelines and instructions for the paper um, with the due dates. The annotated bibliography will be in March, and then the final paper is sort of towards the end of the semester. Um, my recommendation is just don't put it off to the last minute. Like it'll save you a lot of time and effort in the long run if you prepare a little bit early on. Um, so just kind of keep it in the back of your mind, think about it. Um, and I will uh, do some presentations later on in the semester. So, you know, as we get closer to the annotated bibliography, I'll do a short presentation on it. Um, I'll give you guys examples. I'll um, I'll, I'll kind of break it down with you, and I'm always happy to re review an assignment before you submit it. And um, I don't make you clear your topic with me, but I am happy to talk with you about it. I do ask that it relate to the course, but it's a really, that's a really broad spectrum. Um, and there is a possible topics list. It's not exhaustive, but it's, you know, to give you some ideas of options, I've posted on Canvas a, um, you know, potential research topic list. To come back to the class, I, you know, just like to mention again that I think this class is very helpful and important in terms of self-efficacy for teachers. Um, it will, you know, really, again, help you to understand how the profession evolved and changed over time and what influences 
um, shaped it. And then we will also talk about a lot of these in contemporary time periods. So on the screen, if you're looking at it to the left is, you know, Betsy DeVos, our former Secretary of Education, who was uh, unique from, from former Secretaries of Education, um, which, which we can talk about. Miguel Cordova is our current um, Secretary of Education. And then the two on the right are Jennifer McCormick and uh, Dr. Jenner. Um, so, and Dr. McCormick and Dr. Jenner were both um, Indiana, well, Dr. Jenner is our current uh, Indiana sort of CEO, um, chief education officer in, um, in Indiana. Jennifer McCormick, the former one, I always like to point out was a Ball State graduate and a number of, of state leadership, former secretaries of education in Indiana um, have, were Ball State graduates. And so, um, you know, I'm sure that they started off thinking about curriculum and classroom management, but um, for all teachers, I feel like over time, the context and policies and other things play an important role long term in your career. So yeah, my goal is just to make this a really good semester to make it interesting and informative. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've gone over, please email me. I'd be happy to talk about it or try to clarify in more detail. And um, the syllabus is about 16 pages long, so it's a lot of information, but I've really tried to put everything you, there that you might need um, in terms of questions and so forth.